when we're finished, just stand there and stare at me for a couple of seconds and let the tape roll. Okay, this is Roman Mueller, a junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Roman, uh, two questions for you. One, in two or three sentences, describe Coach Majerus to someone who doesn't know him. <laughs> uh, he's a warm person who uh, likes to get his point across and doesn't like uh, you to question his, his uh, position as a coach. Oh, uh, what else I could probably add to that would probably be he's uh, very demanding and he doesn't expect, he expects only 100% from all his players. Good. Second question, describe what this season has been like for you. For myself? And the team. Oh, it's been a real successful season, I feel. Um, we've come out and competed at every game, I feel, and uh, the two games that we lost um, came came about because of poor shooting in one game we just didn't come out and compete at. But other than that, we've been able to put together a, a, a good season, I feel. And we've, uh, we've played together, which is something I was questioning at the beginning of the season. We've really molded together as a team early. And that was a question many people posed to us. And uh, I feel that was a benefit for our team. Good, thanks. Right. That was painful. <laughs> no. No. I did want you to be spontaneous this morning and said that the kids were lined up outside the door waiting to talk to the Ball State recruiters. Is that right? Because they heard about the basketball team and you guys. Down Is that there. right? Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> you ready? Okay. This is Paris McCurdy. He's a junior from Detroit, Michigan. Paris, in two or three sentences, describe Coach Majerus to someone who has never met him. I would have to describe uh, Coach Majerus as being a two-sided person. Uh, on the court, you know, he's very demanding. Uh, he gets to the point and, uh, you know, he, he expects a lot out of the players, you know, and off the court, he's the same way as far as our academics goes. And uh, he's also a friend and a, a warm person. He's, you know, one of the best person to be around. Good. Second question, describe what this season has been like for you and also for the team. Uh, it's been a... Um, fulfilling season for myself. You know, I set goals for myself this season uh, to go out and try to accomplish them. And from this season, I was able to do that. And for the team, it's been very, uh, uh, I have to say it's been very successful because, you know, as a unit, we all set goals to go out and try to accomplish them. And uh, everything has come around and it's been very great. Good. Thank you. Okay. Got me a little better. Ready? About three seconds. Okay. Okay, this is Sean Parrish, a junior from Spencer, Indiana. Spencer, Indiana. Okay. Sean, uh, qu first question I have for you is describe Coach Majerus to us in two or three sentences uh, as if you were describing him to someone who, who didn't know him. Well, Coach Majerus is two different people. When you step on the court, he's a very knowledgeable coach very demanding upon his team and the way they perform and as soon as you get off the court he's a caring person would go to bat for you if you have any troubles and do anything in the world for you all right good and the second question then is how would you describe this season both for yourself and also for the team as a whole well i think for myself it's been a fun year i mean we've come had 22 and 5 season i mean that may i mean 25 and 2 seasons it's been fun and for the team i think it's been fun we've had a lot of different people together here and we've come together well as a team and it's just been a fun year. You're a transfer also to this team from Vincennes University. Um, are, you, are you happy that you made this change and came to Ball State? Oh yeah, no regrets at all. I've had nothing but positive experiences since I've been here and I can't complain about my decision. Did you ever imagine that, uh, that you'd all be talking about and, and, and uh, thinking about an NCAA bid this year? Uh, I had a feeling that we might be a decent ball club, but to ex experience what we've, the success we've had this year wasn't what I imagined. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I look right in the camera? No, or look you? at me. All right. Pretend the camera's not there. Okay, this is Rick Hall, the only senior on the Ball State team from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Rick, in two or three sentences, describe Coach Majerus for us to someone who doesn't know him. I think on the court, Coach Majerus is a real intense person, a 
very emotional and demanding. He tries to get the most out of his players as he does with himself also. I think off the court, he's also very emotional and caring. He always has his players' interests first, and he's helped us all so much, both athletically and academically. All right, now describe for me uh, what this season has been like for you as the only senior on the squad and also for the team in general. For me, it's just been a dream season. I mean, this is my senior year. It's my last chance, and I just want to go out a champion, which we did. And I, can't, I just can't explain the feeling I have and the satisfaction knowing that in my last season I went out a winner. Thanks. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, all set. No, I'm fine. I, I, I've done a million of these. I mean, okay. Some of the things we want you to to, to mention: the Cinderella season, um, your philosophy about about protecting the paint and getting a good shot every time down the floor. Okay. Those kinds of things. Um, I'll just answer whatever questions you ask me. All right. Yeah. All right, but, but if you can keep those in mind, those okay. are some of the highlights. The, the focus of the tape is going to be a Cinderella year. Okay, All great, right? so fine. If you mention that, then it will be that much ahead. All right. Uh, Coach Majerus, describe for us your philosophy uh, of the game of basketball. Well, we, uh, we try to play as a team and First and foremost, we try to make sure everyone understands what their capabilities are and what their limitations are. And then within the framework of that, we try to adhere to the philosophy that there's no I in team. And in conjunction with that, we begin and end every huddle. Every practice is ended with everyone clasping hands and saying team together. And we play as a unit and as a team together. And then once we establish that as a premise, that teamwork is going to be the foremost thing in our attack and in our game plan, then we go on to say that we want to get a shot at the basket every time down. We'd prefer a good shot, but any shot's better than a turnover. And then secondly, we want to defend the paint. We want to make it as difficult for teams to score. And I think the difficulty comes and your three-point plays are eliminated and fouls are not a problem if you defend the paint. Why has this team succeeded this year? Well, I think this is a Cinderella team for the reasons that I just mentioned, uh, the aforementioned is probably the most important, you know, the teamwork and the acceptance of what their capabilities are. And a lot of people would assign role playing to that. Uh, so playing their roles. And I think we have good depth. We have nine players that we play very comfortably in a rotation. And we've gone 10 and 11 deep at times. And we have a nice inside game with some strength. We, we've implemented an outstanding weight program that is built the bodies. A lot of the bodies that you see are built up bodies, not uh, bodies that they came here with. And then I think uh, we have good perimeter shooting. And I think it's difficult for someone to say we're going to take away the perimeter game because then we're going to go inside. If you take away our inside game, you've got to give us the perimeter shot. And again, everything is predicated on good defense, getting the shot. And then the most important ingredient that I haven't mentioned to date is probably rebounding. If you're going to be any kind of a team, let alone a Cinderella team, you have to rebound. So our big boys look at every shot off the basket that misses as a pass to themselves. That's the philosophy we take. And they go to the boards very aggressively. Uh, and we rebound down with our guards. So we get a lot of secondary area rebounds and initiate our break by rebounding down to the dotted line. Okay. Can you uh, describe for us what this season has been like? For the team or for myself? Both. Well, for myself, it, 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 it's a rewarding season, but I think that really the nicest season I've ever had, and I've coached a long time at every level, grammar school, high school, college, and professionally, was last year when we went 14 and 14. We had maybe one Division I player and, and a group of kids who were hard workers. And so that was the most rewarding season. But this season has been a lot of fun because you've only lost twice. and. I think the kids have been overachievers this year as well, and the team has definitely overachieved. And they've been so adaptable to what's been required of them to win. Uh, 
from day one, they had a commitment to winning the conference championship and any kind of a Cinderella team has got to win the league. And then we need to win our tourney now coming up in order to take another step further. I think the a rewarding aspect of it too is how quickly they've come together and the fact that they're all back next year. I'm delighted to return the entire team with the exception of our captain, Rick Hall, whose value is incalculable, but nevertheless, his value is not on the court as much as it is in terms of the captaincy of the team. Uh, in terms of the team, I think they're elated for themselves, the university. I maintain from the day that I came here that this was the best kept secret in America. We have a quality education to afford. We have a terrific relationship and a great uh, faculty and staff that's very giving of themselves to all students, particularly players. And within the framework of our, of our university, we have a mission to minority students and to students of underprivileged backgrounds that encompasses athletic programs. It is not set apart from most programs in, in athletics. They take these disadvantaged or minority youngsters, and that is not the mission of their university. A segment of the mission of Ball State is to educate and to recruit actively minority youngsters. So within the framework of our university, we have taken players like Keith Stalling on Prop 48 and done very well, remarkably so. Uh, I think the most rewarding thing is the fact that right now Rick Hall will graduate and go to uh, University of Illinois or University of Chicago Law School. Uh, he was a Rhodes Scholar candidate and that we have everyone in the program on tra track for graduation. We try to understand that this is uh, important to us, success on the court, but success in the classroom is of paramount importance. And I think that the team reflects that. We, we don't have a whole team of Rick Halls. No one does. I mean, he's got a 399 average and has only gotten two B's and came to Ball State with a perfect score on his entrance exam. But we have some other fellows who are solid C students and want to be high school coaches. And I think that that's a terrific accomplishment. And if they can do the best of their ability, there's a spot for those students at Ball State. Good. Okay. Um, another quick question. In two or three sentences, what are your goals for the team, first of all? Well, we really have no goals. I mean, I have none. The, 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 everything is encompassed in those two things. Uh, on the court in terms of, of defending the paint. And if you defend the paint, you know, everything else defensively is taken care of because the paint is toughest of all to defend. That's obviously the highest percentage shot. And then secondly, by getting the shot every time down, you're not turning the ball over. And in order to not turn the ball over, you have to have ball movement, player movement. Uh, you have to screen effectively and efficiently. You have to have, uh, you know, fellows who understand what they can do best on the floor. So everything on the floor is though involved, involves trying to attain those two goals and then everything off the floor is in terms of academic success. Just do the best you can be. If you're only a C student, as I guess David Letterman was, which is interesting, his plaque saying, this is dedicated to everybody a little bit above and a little bit below C everywhere. I'm paraphrasing it. That's kind of what we are here. We have some C students and we want them to be C students. We have some A students and scholars and we want them to be scholars. Uh, Sean Parrish, for example, is a junior college academic All-American, in addition to being a basketball American. And he's as resounding a success in the classroom as he is on the court and will one day graduate from here with honors. So we, those are the goals that we, we try to live by. And pervasive of all that is the, the concept and attitude that team is number one. You know, there's no I in team. If someone wants to put the I in team, they're given the best seat on the bench. You have probably already answered the second question for me, then the goals for for your players. Yeah, I think I've answered that. I mean, those are the goals. that I, I, The goals for the players are to, to obtain a degree and to, on your in route to the degree, to learn as much as you can about yourself and the times in which you live. I think those are the goals of all educators, and those are goals that are we talk about in the basketball context, but that I think those are goals that are taught by instructors and professors at Ball State. Uh, so I think that it, with education as our primary goal, uh, you know, you look at a guy like Rick Hall who played last year and started and, and got a number of minutes and this year his minutes are radically decreased and he, he's, he just understands that he's going on to something better and he, and he understands he's being, his time is being taken by better players. Okay, thank you. I need, I need one more thing from you. Sure. All right, we just need sound on this, okay? All right, so I'll just I'll just go through the list. You tell me in a couple of sentences what comes to mind when, okay. I, when I say their names. Paris McCurdy. 
A uh, terrific heart. He's a leading rebounder in the league, but he is also probably the leading rebounder in the country below the rim. He gets as many running them down as he does uh, as he does above the rim, and he's the best defensive player in our league. Okay. Billy Butts. Billy's an outstanding shooter and has become more and more of a defensive stopper. Uh, his unselfishness and his ability to feed the post on the perimeter appeals to me. Curtis King. <clears throat> the best all-around player on the team and perhaps the smartest. Uh, He's multifaceted, and offensively, he's capable of, of doing almost anything. Scott Nichols. Very good leader, a point guard, gets us into our attack. Uh, you know, he's the jockey. Greg Miller. An outstanding shooter, uh, among the best I've seen in, in the NBA or in collegiate ball, and, and, and uh, has stri made strides defensively uh, on a big-time basis this year. Rick Hall. Uh, probably the finest captain I've ever seen in 20 years of coaching. Uh, a, a born leader and someone the team respects and an outstanding person. Mike Spicer. A freshman who's going to be a very good player when he's a junior. He's, he runs the team, takes care of the ball, and his maturity belies his years. Keith Stalling. An excellent shooter and scorer. Someone who will blossom next season into a very fine outstanding offensive player and is becoming a very competent defensive player as well. Sean Parrish. In incredibly tough and disciplined, knows for the ball, very aggressive, uh, the chemistry and the glue behind the team's success. And Roman Mueller. Very good shot blocker, great low post scorer, someone on the rise. If he can gain 15 more pounds, I think he'll be awesome next season. Uh, gets better with every practice. Great. Thanks, Coach. There, I have more guys in the team than that. You don't want to do them all, huh? Well, or just those. we got Rodney, Tommy House, and, and uh, Barber. Barber. Yeah. I'd like to, you know, I mean, I kind of like would like to get recognition from all. I understand that all media don't always like to do that. They, but. they may not all make it. Yeah, okay. 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 But if they can all get in there, that would be good. Uh, would, all right. Did we not? I think we got everybody except those three. Stone, Spicer, Hall. Stone, Spicer. Haynes, Barber. Miller, okay, and right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. okay. We still rolling? Okay. Tom A. House. Well, I lost his tooth in practice the other day and didn't miss a beat. You know, came right back out, plays hard. It's a shame that he's, he's mired behind three all league players uh, because when he gets a chance as a senior, he's going to be very good. Rodney Hayes. Uh, the captain of the scout team, his job is to make us ready to play any team on our schedule and replicate the other team's plays, and he does that out in an outstanding manner. And finally, Dave Barber. Barber's won two games for us this year. He won at, he had Valparaiso and here against uh, uh, Ohio University. He can hit a three-point shot and extend the defense, and he doesn't turn the ball over. All set then? Yes, sir. Thank you. Great. Be to, to uh, try to attract some interest in the Ball State team as the Cinderella team of the NCAAs. Okay. So uh, we'll have uh, some interviews with you know a couple of the players and uh -huh. with Coach Majerus, and then we'll be showing highlights of the season. Okay. And that's basically all. All right. <coughs> you got the sound and everything? Yep. Okay. Let me put this down. Mm -hmm. This is Scott Nichols, a junior from Detroit, Michigan. Scott, I've got two questions for you. First, um, describe Coach Majerus to someone who had never met him or doesn't know him. Uh, I can use some nice adjectives. Intense, uh, workaholic, very intelligent. I mean, he knows his X's and O's better than anyone, I think, in the game. You can tell by the way we play on the court, the way we execute. And um, just a fun guy to be around, a lot of fun. All right, second question is, is similar. Describe for me what this season has been like, both for you as a player and also for the team generally. For me as a player, this season has been, been, uh, been very nice. I think this and my senior year in high school were the two biggest seasons I've ever had in my life. I mean, this year we've just accomplished so much. And, you know, it, the thing that helped us a lot was there was no pressure on us. You know, we, we just came out and worked hard every day, and it paid off. And as far as the team, I think individual goals really can't compare to, to the 12 guys on a team as far as their team goes. 
team goals just totally outweigh everybody's individual goals and the team gets along with each other so it's been a lot of fun like that too. A lot of people talk about the, the, the we just assume it changes it. Okay. Disney Corporation. Uh, I, I've never worked for them but I know some people who have mm -hmm. and they say it's really a good good company to work for, you know, good benefits and they treat their employees real well. Okay. Just that last question again we got the morning on the All right. Okay. <coughs> just do that. Second question about how the season, describe okay. the season. And then I've got a couple more. All right. Okay. Scott, describe for us um, what this season has been like, both for you as a player and, and for the team generally. Well, first, me as a player, this season has been, been extraordinary. I mean, the team, we just, just all have a genuine liking for each other. You know, everyone know what they have to do in order for us to win, and we all try and go out and execute. And me, I, I know my role, and I'm trying to help others. So it's been fun individually. And as, as a team go, like I say, the team goals totally outweigh individual goals on this team. I mean, we all know what we're here to do, and we know the only way we can get it done is if we do it together. So with us liking each other like we do, it's been a lot of fun. How has that happened? Uh, lots of folks talk about how important the team concept is. There's yeah. no I in team, but this team has accomplished that somehow. We all, we have to get out to Coach Majerus. I mean, we have so many different talents on this team. Everyone has something that they can do real good. And I think that all goes down to the coach, Coach Hansaker, Coach Drake, Coach Hoppensberger, Coach Earlywine. I mean, they just, every day, drill it in your heads that, you know, there's no individual standouts on this team. I mean, sure, if we give it to Curtis every game, all day, that he can score, or Bill, or anybody, but we know that, that this is a together thing, you know, we all have to do it together. So Coach Majerus drills that in our heads and this worked out fine. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it.